Baseball season around the corner, people, and you know we're baseball people on the Rich Eisen Show, and so is this man. He's a World Series champion and an analyst for MLB Network, and he's coming on in support of the Invited Celebrity Classic he's going to be playing in with the PGA Champions Tour. The great Kevin Millar back on the Rich Eisen Show. How are you doing, Kevin? Good to see you. Uh, still can't putt, Rich. Love golf. Um, mm-hmm. You can't master the sport. And as you can see, I'm in a major moving process right now. Yeah. Um, your shelving um, is lacking. But I I, <laughs> I appreciate, though, that you're spreading out, I guess, the remaining unpacked baseballs that you have to spill it, fill up the space behind you, Kevin. Let, let me just put, let me put these on real quick, and I'm just going to give you just a quick. So, okay, yeah. as you can see over here, love it. we would have a the game used uh, gloves. So I don't know the piece, but this was the 04, 20 years, by the way. Ooh. Back when we could use pine tar on our gloves and stuff, so the pitchers might might get extra grip. I don't know. Yeah. I didn't say it out loud, right, Richie? <laughs> um, right here, we have the <laughs> Orioles game used helmet. No idea what that does or does. That, that looks, looks like a, some pine tar on the top of that too, brother. I'm not going to lie. Back when we used pine tar, yep. back when the boys can get a little grip or so. Yep. And uh, I have a Ryan Dempster signed baseball if anybody wants that. Um, <laughs> wait a minute. Carlos Delgado, what I'm trying oh, to show you. Oh, yeah, he's one of my favorites home run calls oh, when I was on balls. Sports Center back in the day. Carlos Delgado, Delgado. That was one of my favorites of all time, Kevin. I love him. Yeah, so moving. I, I wouldn't put that on anybody, but this used to be the uh, the, uh, the the fun office, and now it is just deep breaths. <laughs> I appreciate the tour, man. That's fantastic. And then just you in general. Uh, is that like a Dick Tidro Al Roboski sort of homage yeah. mo- mustache you've got working right now, Kevin? What do you got going 11 on? Eleven minutes ago, it was a white Santa Claus just stuff. <laughs> And I went down to the Fu Manchu, and what happened was, you know, I got two boys in high school, okay? One's a junior, one's a senior. And I was a big facial hair connoisseur. So if I wasn't hitting, it was immediately a shaved head. It was handlebars. It was goatee. It was beer, whatever it was. I've got one that's hitting and one that's not. So really, I wanted to shave for the one that's not. And I'm like, we're going to change it up today. we got a big couple games today. And so that's what I went with. I went with this with a little bit of mascara, the dark brown, not not black, dark brown, waterproof. 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 It's not your first rodeo, Kevin Millar. This is not your first rodeo. And I appreciate that. Did it ever work that you would shave and you'd get hits? Did that really ever work, Kevin, for real? Uh, True story. True story. I grounded out into three double plays against Greg Maddox. And at one point, I was started off with a beard. Not in that game. Then, uh, you know, I ground out, went upstairs and shaved during the game <laughs> to a goatee. It was another ground out, went upstairs during the game, my third about, and went to the handlebars. We got out again. But I shaved three times in a game, my three different looks. And I remember Tommy Hutton going, didn't Kevin have a beard when we started this game? And, and I ended up with handlebars. So that could be a first time in history. Oh, but oh, so 0 for 3, which, by the way, no shame against Greg Maddox. Many, many, many have gone 0 for 3, but you might be the only one with three different looks, Kevin. That's next level. Yeah, three, I know it was three straight drum ball double plays in the same game was a record. I think myself and John Mabry at right. that moment with the Marlins, which is back in the 40s and 50s. I know they were expansion team, but it sounds that it feels that old. I love it. Kevin Millar here on the Rich Eisen Show. All right, so uh, let's just jump into the season. We're all paying uh, rent in Otani's world, right? Is that basically it right now, Kevin? And the, and the Dodgers world. I mean, $1.4 billion uh, in an offseason. Game is healthy. Game is good. And, you know, I get asked a lot, is that good for baseball? Why isn't it? Yeah, it's good for baseball. And what Andrew Freeman and this organization has done, because let's, let's go back when he was with the uh, – with the Rays, Andrew Freeman, you know, he, they won 90 plus games a year with a very small budget. Now with the Dodgers, I think he's got an absolutely large budget. And yes, Otani, we are living in his world. They are a good ball club before these moves with Freddie Freeman and Mookie Betts and pure leaders. Now, this is definitely the team to beat. And yes, it is World Series or bust because that should be your next question with uh, Richie is that is this World Series or bust for the Dodgers? And Dave Roberts. Hell yeah. I mean, we're all just treading water just to see how many wins they have during the regular season. And 
you know, what, what ends up happening about their seeding in the playoffs. And then it now that's when the rubber meets the road. And we'll see who might take them out. A team that is, you know, well healed or well moneyed like Atlanta or Philadelphia. Or it could be one of those plucky Diamondbacks teams that just catches fire where everybody puts the ball in play. Everybody throws strikes. And that will always win the day, right? I mean, what's that? that's basically the question about the Dodgers as we're sitting here in early March, Kevin. Isn't that amazing what you just said, though? Because let's go back to last year. Those two teams nobody had on the big stage. And that's what makes this game so great. Bruce Bochy comes back, takes over a team that, you know, lost 100 games almost the last couple of years. And then now they're in the World Series. And then you look at the Arizona Diamondbacks, like Tori Lavello in this group, what I loved about both those clubs, Max Scherzer made it a point to me, and it was awesome. Look at these two teams. You know, there's not a whole lot of antics. You got Corey Seager and you got Simeon, who's the only guy, by the way, in our game to play all 176 games mm. last year. It seems like everybody's dying to have a day off or just wants to play, you know, 120 games or wants to go out there and just get three in the third innings and gets a high five. The, the appreciation of the young kids, Evan Carter, Corbin Carroll, the game's played the right way, hard and right. You have some stars, but you had ball players, And I think that needs to kind of rub off on the rest of the league. This game still played with respect. Yes, we're in a world where we brand. And yes, we're in a world where we can do a backflip after a double. I'm all good with that. But at the end of the day, this game's about respect. Play the game hard, play the game right, and good things can happen. Those two teams got hot at the right time. And it was refreshing because nobody had them on our schedules. Or a radar, but the Atlanta Braves, I love what you said. They, to me, are the World Series favorites going in, if you were to ask me, because of what Alex Anthopoulos has done and signed all those guys together for five to ten years. They're a tough club. Even more than the Dodgers, you're thinking, the Braves. I, I say yes. I say yes because of chemistry. It's uh -huh. hard to go out and pull four or five guys, put them in the year, and then win a World Series. That's hard. It's great to talk about. A lot of money, a lot of stuff. How are they going to pay show? Hey, we're going to backload it. We got all this stuff going. We, it, it's like this. And they're going to win 100-plus games. But you know, Rich, as well as I do, you have to be playing well. You have to be injury-free. You have to be all of these things the last few weeks of the season. And not all the time are the best team, I mean, the best players in the top of this stage with baseball, the best teams are. So we'll see. Well, you're also, you know, a long time, um, I guess you go way back, like a car seat with the manager of the Dodgers, clearly, Kevin. Showered you know, with him. So <laughs> Showered with him. That's, That's close. No, I was going to say intimately, no, but I didn't mean that. But, yeah, you, you know Dave Roberts. So what is the challenge for him? You know, how do you get guys who are all world to basically hit when it's game on the line, you know, and Freeman does it and Betts knows how to do it. And Otani has never been obviously in that situation, you know, in America, but how does a manager prepare all season long for that moment when rubber meets the road in a playoff game, Kevin, how do you do that? I think, I, I think your job as a manager is to get the most out of your players, right? There's right. 25 different personalities. And what's that mean? Well, Rich, you're a guy that I might have to be able to get on to. Like, you know, you're not doing your job. You jog the ball out, whatever it was. I might need to get on you behind the scenes. And there's a guy over here I might need to pat. If Shohei Otani might not do something right or I need him to hit on the field and he's not hitting on the field. Because I think what happens is that you have to, obviously, you have all of these egos and all of these different salaries and all these different people, and you have management teams around them. That's the difference now. You know, we used to have a hat on backwards with a set of cards in our back pocket, and we're going to go play some cribbage or hearts or spades. I think you have to find a way to get them to believe and buy into being a team. If we're hitting on the field, everybody hits on the field. If we're hitting in the cages, awesome. But I don't want to see, like, one dude in the Pilates studio, one dude's over here eating kale smoothies, one dude over here is, you know, doing sprints. <laughs> I love to see the group around each other where you can talk, you can rag, you can make fun of each other. So Dave Roberts has got a tougher job than people think. Everybody's like, oh, yeah, just throw everybody out there. They're going to win. Yeah, if you can get everybody in, and they got good people. They got good people. Like when you're talking about a Betts and a Freeman to start with your foundation, Clayton Kershaw, he'll be back sometime in August. But 
they've got some foundation. All Dave has to do, dude, is to step back and make sure everybody's on the same page. And, you know, he's one of the greatest people you're ever going to meet. I mean, hands down, Dave Roberts, one of the nicest men you'll meet. No doubt. Kevin Millar here on the Rich Eisen Show, and we'll get to golf and the uh, the celebrity classic that you're playing in in Las Colinas uh, Country Club in, in Texas in April. Um, but let's talk about the Rangers. Obviously, they're the World Series champs. Tough to not look at the Orioles and say this is it, right? I mean, they're so young, so talented. They're so very good <laughs> even though they haven't been tested they haven't been heartbroken more than just last year so w- how do you handicap the american league right now yeah you, brandon hyde another great dude like a baseball guy was around him with john lester's retirement you know a year or so ago and it was awesome to be around him because you know i didn't know much about brandon other than john lackey these boys had him in chicago with the cubs and they're like dude he's the greatest dude ever He's the greatest dude ever. He really is. He's a guy that cares about his dudes. Uh, you know, I played with the Orioles from the 06, 07, 08 years when we were worrying about facial hair. You know, we were the New York Yankees rules. I'm like, time out. Let, that's the New York Yankees. Let's worry about winning some ball games over here, not worrying about how much orange I have in my spikes or how long I've shaved. And now this organization, you know, fast forwarding, I'm like, they are really good. They've drafted well. And, Rich, what I think that people forget is the scouts don't get enough credit in this game. So you and I are scouts for, let's say, the New York Mets, and we're going to watch a kid and getting in our car driving to Southwest you know, Conference to watch a, a, a dude, but not to miss on your draft, your ones, your twos, your threes, and your fourth-round guys. That's big. That's what the Orioles have done. I mean, you got Henderson, an Alabama boy, Great friends with Jake Peavy, looked up to him, but like a good person along with a great player. Jackson Holiday that we've heard so much about. Matt Holiday, one of the nicest men that you're going to have. I mean, their catcher comes in and starts being a leader immediately. They drafted great, and now you're getting a chance to see these dudes help the big league club. And that's what the Rays did so many, so so great so many years. You had your David Prices, your James Shields, your Evan Longoria's. They were pros that helped the pro team as young men. What about the Yankees, Kevin? What do you think? So I, mean, I love the Soto edition. Right. I know that Soto, you know, we, we we talk about him like he's, you know, the best player in the game. What he has the ability to do that a lot of people didn't do as a young guy is the knowledge of strike zone. Like when you're talking about a player that can hit, yeah, Soto can hit. Now, if I'm him I'll, I, or, or Boney, I'm like, we know you can hit. We know you got power. We know all of it, right? But at the end of the day, let's work on some stuff to really get better and be a championship type club. That'd be my defense, my base running. And let's figure out how to stay on the field as a team. But this kid, great sign by the Yankees. I think it's tremendous. And we, we heard a lot about it. It didn't work out in, you know, San Diego. Nobody knows why you had all the same type players on paper. You had all the same type starters on paper with Snell and Darvish. And you're sitting here going, why, why are the Padres kind of just going? They never got hot. I don't know why. Only they don't why. So I like this addition the Yankees made. And then you let's just talk before we get to the the golf, Kevin. Uh, the Red Sox. I mean, obviously, spring hope springs eternal, and so many people show up, and uh, you know, and we know in this in this sport with thirty clubs that not everybody's got a real shot at the World Series. You normally don't put the Red Sox in that category, and you don't usually see somebody like Rafael Devers basically come out that the needs for this team are clear and. Cl- clearly intimating that ownership didn't fill the needs. So how do you, yeah. how do you take his comments? Kevin? Well, I mean, I'll start out and we're going to, let's say a prayer. Let's pray. The Red Sox are in for a long year. I mean, they're in for a long year. They're what we call where you don't want to be right in that middle. You are either rebuilding and you come out and be honest with the fans and say, all right, we're in a rebuilding process because every organization goes through it. The Chicago Cubs went through it when they signed Theo Epstein for five years over there, and he made a great point. You need three drafts, three Junes to build this organization. So they lost a lot of games, and then boom, 2016, we broke a 100-year curse, and the Cubs win. The Red Sox do the 86-year curse, 04, 20 years this year, by the way. Wow. And then you go 07, you go 13, and then you go 2018, right? So they've won a lot of World Series in this short little span, and now you've had a lot of, like, eh, 
they finished in last place, I believe, two of the last three years. You got a year that you're looking at going, oh, my goodness gracious. The Blue Jays are good. We've talked about the Orioles, how good they are. The Rays are always good. The Yankees. How many games and where this is this team going to finish? Well, you, immediately on paper, it says last place. Now, how do you handle this, right? It's a big market, big city, big money organization. It's just there's a lot of things like Mookie Betts not still being there. Xander Bogart's not still being there. These deals needed to be done before they went to free agency. So it, 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 the $200 million deal that Xander got, the Padres, that's too late. But you might have got this deal done for $140 million. By the way, Devers and him are our best friends. So if you're going to give a dude $300 million to Rafi Devers, then how is like Xander Bogart's gone? Well, this is the stuff that went on, and it happens. Okay, great. They're in for a long year. They have to build this farm system. They're not going to win the World Series this year. That's the honest-to-God truth about it. Alice Cora is a great baseball man, and he's going to get the most out of this club. But at the end of the day, it's going to be a long year for the Boston Red Sox. And this is what makes it kind of fun when you're in that team. You could say, hey, boys, let's go out and shock some people. Nats go out and win 85 games maybe. I don't know. But you're looking on paper going, "Uh uh-oh. Hmm. That is a mouthful, no doubt about that. All right, let's talk about the third annual Invited Celebrity Classic. You're going to peg it up April 19th through the 21st at Las Colinas Country Club in Irving, right down the street from where the Cowboys used to play on Golf Channel. Do you feel any pressure when the cameras are on and you're pegging it up, thousand, Kevin? Walk me through it. Thousand, five foot five foot left to right, trying to say bogey, Richie. I'm going to tell you right now, Paul, <laughs> wedding. It doesn't make sense because you go out with the boys. And if you and I are playing, I'm like, yeah, Rich, that's good. Let's, let's go. Yes. You don't realize how hard it is to make a three and a half footer. Down grain, down wind. And I'm telling you right now, if you could do me one favor, we've played this last couple of years. Yes, Kevin. The wind's been like 35 miles an hour. And Uncle Kevin can't play that left to right wind because we're cutters. <laughs> we're just, we're baseball players. We want to hit it and the spin goes this way. And then you play against these guys and with these guys. It's amazing to watch these senior guys play golf. It doesn't affect them. Like, we're stressed out, aiming left to go right and all the stuff. These dudes, the LPGA and the seniors, they just swing nice and easy, and that ball just goes, boom. They just take a little more club, but you know us. We can't learn from that. We got to try to hit the driver 300 yards so it goes in the trees. So how does it work? You're you're paired with a uh, PGA yeah. champion tour player right and um and then it's you and a bunch of other um fellow athletes like glavin and lester and joe carter you maddox the aforementioned matt romo's out there look out albert yep. Pujols, smoltz good lord these are real sticks Erlacher. kevin Erlacher. Yes. yeah there's a lot of smack talking there's a lot of gambling behind the scenes but oh, what God. goes on like vj saying with me and brian Erlacher one day and sure. then next day so that's how it goes. There's two of us and one of them. Okay. But there is a lot of smack talking. There's side bets going on. Erlacher and I, it seems like we finished between the 15th to the 25th, and it seems like we're always there. So there's side bets that go. But thank goodness he's very nice because he's 6'4", and he could eat my face off. <laughs> so I stay on his good side. Even if I do win, I'll, I'll still want to pay him because I don't want him to beat me up. But, yeah, it's a, it's a tremendous event. $500,000 has been written to charity. So there's Love some it. charity work behind the scenes. Uh, Mike Flasky is a buddy of mine that started these. I mean, I'm basically on a napkin. Like, how can we – and there's some good golf. How can we start these events with some players that football, baseball, basketball, doesn't matter, that guys love golf now. Golf wasn't this cool before Tiger made it really cool. And then Ricky Fowler made it cool for kids. So it's one of those games you can't master. We all take, up, take it up when we're done playing. And uh, hopefully your wife loves that you golf because I kind of sneak out of here in the morning. Nice. You, know, you tiptoe. You tiptoe. And then that's how it goes. Live on the Golf Channel all three days of competition. Again, uh, make a note of it, April 19th through the 21st. Kevin Millar, great fun chat. Before I let you go, last one. Last one for you here. Otani, as you know, 10 years, right? Let's just say he plays all 10, right? Um, mm-hmm. How many World Series is, an, is, is sufficient? Like two. Just two, huh? That's it. I mean, do Two? you know how hard it is to win a championship? I know. Like it's hard. The Yankees. Remember the Yankees in 98, 99, 2000? Like, those lineups, you're like, wow. So, I would say realistically, because you look at the Phillies. Look at that team. They're a good ball club. Look at the yeah. Braves. They're a good ball club. You don't think the Orioles are going to be 
really good if they add an arm here and an arm there. And next thing you know, you're like, so you have some good ball clubs. Now, I, the Otani situation as a hitter, awesome. Like, he is awesome. But we're talking about the combination of pitching and hitting. Right. We don't know how the arm's going to come back. That's so true. So I'm giving you two World Series. If he comes back in 26 and makes, you know, 25 starts a year, then we're going to come back in the show. I'm like, yep, he's back to throwing 100 with a split finger and hitting 50 home runs. Maybe four World Series. That's <laughs> well, let's split the difference. We were saying three on the show. Three. Three, like, a, 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 listen, hitting 300 has, gives you a good chance to get in the Hall of Fame. So three out of ten, yeah. that's what we were thinking. But uh, All right. I'll look at the Chiefs. They're going for three for three. So, right. yeah, maybe it's, maybe it's gotten easier to win championships. Nah, but, boy, right. the, oh, 4 was hard. I bet. Well, a happy 20th anniversary on that, but I'll, I'll, I'll speak to you way before the season as well. And just look for more of my uh, calls, Kevin. Thank you. Thanks, Richie. You bet. Kevin Millar at Kevin Millar 15 with his Fu Manchu right here on the Rich Eisen Show. Catch the Rich Eisen Show every single day on the Roku channel, 12 to 3 Eastern for free.